I'll be discussing energy dependent neutrino mixing parameters at oscillation experiments. And this is based on the work done in collaboration with Kaladi Babu, Andre de Gouvea, and Pedro Machado. Uh, let me first start by saying that the couplings on mass parameters in the standard model and beyond the standard model uh, theories are energy dependent. Uh, this is what we learned in the QFT course. And uh, while we know that after the process of regularization and the randomization of theories, the parameters are energy dependent, it's also uh, relevant to point out that uh, uh, some of the energy dependence of the parameters has actually already been observed at, at different experiments. Uh, for instance, the running of the B quark was observed at Delphi. The running of the top quark was re recently uh, published by CMS collaboration. And here, for uh, in connection with the running of uh, the weak mixing angle, I'm showing uh, all existing experiments uh, to date. So the question is, uh, is something similar maybe also going on in the neutrino sector? Can we actually observe neutrino running at the neutrino experiment, uh, the R uh, RG evolution at neutrino experiments? And uh, I will show that the answer to that question is affirmative. Let me start by um, discussing the energy dependence of the PMNS matrix. Here on the left, you have the usual weak uh, coupling. And here in the middle panel, uh, you see one of the representative corrections, the higher order electroweak corrections, namely the one loop diagram. Um, it turns out that uh, these kind of contributions do not really qualitatively change the structure of the PMNS matrix and that they don't induce the running of the PMNS matrix. However, however the PMNS matrix runs if one qualitatively changes the flavor structure of this uh, um, neutrino line here. And this was done already uh, in many beyond the star model theories. I'm listing here a couple of papers where the authors were typically considering the rounding between the uh, GAT scale and uh, the electric scale. Um, our strategy here in this talk is somewhat complementary because we're interested in the relatively light new physics uh, where the masses of new particles are uh, comparable to the actual energies at neutrino experiments. So we are actually seeking to explore the impact of RG evolution at neutrino experiments. Uh, just to uh, clarify the picture, um, let us look at this uh, Feynman diagram that is representing the neutrino production, neutrino propagation, and uh, neutrino detection. Uh, this is the base, basis of the QFT approach in the derivation of neutrino oscillation probabilities. What enters in such probability formula are the mass square differences and the pin and mass matrix elements. Um, the uh, propagating neutrino is on shell because it needs to travel macroscopic distance. Then that means that these masses here should be evaluated at the momentum transfer of the order of the neutrino mass squared. This is a very small scale and we don't expect any RG effects there. Uh, however, the PMNS matrix uh, uh, can have uh, uh, different effects. Uh, for instance, uh, we pick up two uh, matrix elements at production, those which have index alpha and two with the index beta. At production, the contribution to the uh, production am amplitude uh, should be Lorentz invariant. And uh, using that, those such arguments, um, we can uh, uh, sit in the rest frame of decaying pion and where the mass of the pion is the only uh, relevant uh, quantity of the dimension of energy and then we learn that the momentum transfer um, um, at which the PMS matrix element should be evaluated corresponds to the pion mass squared. At the detection, the situation is uh, uh, somewhat different because there what matters is the Mandelstam T variable uh, because neutrino scatters with nucleons and uh, in that expression there is no pion mass. So you already see the mismatch between the two scales at which we evaluate the matrix elements. And uh, this is the basis of the arguments uh, how uh, these uh, RG effects could impact the neutrino experiments. Um, now let's look at the uh, neutrino oscillation formulas. How do they change if we take into account the um, uh, disorganization group effects? Uh, in blue is the formula in two flavors, uh, which if uh, this angle at production, theta p and detection, theta d, um, if they coincide, uh, and if beta goes to zero, uh, you would simply reproduce the usual formula. Um, beta here uh, is the parameter that uh, appears because of the CP validating couplings in the new physics sector. And even though if you look at the parameterization here, it's tempting to regard beta as something connected to the Majorana nature of neutrinos, 
it actually appears uh, also in the case uh, when uh, neutrinos are Dirac. Uh, one more thing about the beta, it, it uh, trivially shifts the oscillation phase. If one does the expansion um, of this uh, uh, expression here, uh, one can learn that uh, in the zero baseline limit, when all these terms in the square bracket uh, goes to zero, uh, the effect is um, uh, appears in the small parameter epsilon uh, square. Whereas if the baseline is finite, there's already terms at the order epsilon uh, that, uh, that appear. So one may be tempted to uh, say that uh, um, the finite baseline uh, experiments are more sensitive than the zero baseline uh, experiments. I will, however, uh, discuss in the phenomenology part, uh, I will come back uh, to the uh, zero baseline experiments. Um, in three flavor, uh, in, uh, in more realistic case, when we have three neutrinos, uh, we have more CPO phases. On top of beta, there's alpha and, of course, delta CP, which should be evaluated at both scales. And uh, here, it's too complicated to write down the full expressions, and one cannot even learn too much from those expressions, but uh, some simple expressions can be obtained by looking at these differences of oscillation probabilities. For instance, here, we infer the first term as the uh, one that uh, appears also in the standard oscillation, whereas the uh, CP uh, terms, CP validating terms from the uh, new physics uh, come here in these brackets. The first one uh, vanishes when delta CP goes to zero, but uh, the second one exists uh, um, even in the case where uh, when uh, when such phase uh, uh, vanishes. So even in the case where when the standard um, CP violation uh, goes to zero. What is also interesting is to look at the differences between the um, electron neutrino and electron anti neutrino disappearance, and this should typically be zero. Uh, because the CPTs should hold. Um, however, this is not zero, and this suggests apparent violation of CPT symmetry, but I should point out that CPT invariance is still preserved, because in considering that one, uh, one should uh, flip the incoming and uh, outgoing here uh, momentum transfers um, in this uh, second expression for the uh, um, electron uh, anti neutrino uh, disappearance. All these uh, formulas and all these effects I've discussed so far are for neutrino oscillations in vacuum. For a realistic case uh, that I will discuss later and show in the, uh, uh, in the plots, uh, for T2K and NOAA, um, we had to include the matter effects and that's done uh, numerically. Um, I should point out a model uh, which can induce such a, a strong running at low scales. And basically we found a scotogenic-like model with uh, U1 and Z2 symmetry, which contains standard model Higgs extra Z2 odd Higgs, light scalar uh, phi, and right handed neutrinos to which phi couples. Uh, this uh, scalar phi breaks the human symmetry. It's crucial that phi and right handed neutrinos are light enough. Their mass is comparable to the masses of uh, energies at neutrino experiments, such as the running can be significant across uh, those scales uh, at uh, which we, uh, where we consider the neutrino oscillation uh, for, for particular neutrino oscillation experiments. So our strategy is essentially to evaluate um, uh, first the neutrino uh, mass matrix at the scale of momentum transfer of the production. And you see the formula here, it's linearly related to the Yukawa coupling between light scalar and the right-handed neutrinos. Uh, then we perform the RG evolution of the uh, for this Yukawa coupling. It, here's one of the representative diagram that enters in such calculation. And when we reach the scale of the momentum transfer of the detection, uh, we again evaluate the mass matrix and the diagonalize in order to get the PMNS at that scale. Uh, at, at that point, we're armed with the PMNS matrices at both momentum transfer uh, corresponding to the production and detection, and we can just proceed by plugging this into the usual formulas uh, for the neutrino oscillations. Uh, here are the results. Here you can see uh, for T2K and NOVA, the standard one sigma regions are given in uh, yellow and uh, green, uh, respectively, and the corresponding measurements are also shown in uh, with these blue and red data points. The randomization group effects uh, are shown by all these scatter points that ex largely ex exceed the regions that the standard oscillations, where the standard the oscillations are uh, uh, exist. So uh, you can even notice that this plot is on log log scale 
So the effect can, can be uh, quite significant. This is for the normal ordering and the mass of lightest neutrino of the 0.05 electron volt. Uh, the effect uh, does depend on that mass. If the mass is 0.01, uh, you see that the effect is much smaller, but still uh, uh, all, many of these points strongly exceed the one in one sigma regions from T2K and NOAA. Uh, you can imagine that many of the points, particularly in the left panel of the previous slide, uh, are just already discarded by, uh, by the experiments. And uh, I'm now returning to this zero baseline, or let's call them short baseline experiments. We found uh, the most relevant uh, uh, of those uh, for our consideration to be uh, Icarus, Charm2, Nomad, and Nutev, particularly latter two because they operate at energies which are much higher. Uh, la the larger the energy, the larger the momentum transfer detection, meaning that the uh, RG effects uh, are essentially larger. In the next slide, I will show how strongly the constraints from short baseline experiments reduce the parameter space that I showed for T2K and NOAA. Um, but I would also like to point out that uh, this type of experiments also uh, killed all the successful explanation of LSND and Miniboon that we have found. Uh, you can see that uh, what was previously here on the log log now is on the linear plot. And now the new physics points are not strongly exceeding the one sigma regions from T2K and NOAA, but they're still uh, uh, sometimes well above uh, those regions. This is for the mass of 0.05 again, and this is for the mass of uh, lighter mass of 0.01 electron volt. Uh, okay, so after learning that the constraints are uh, from short based on experiments are rather significant, I just want to focus on two benchmark points. Uh, here, the uh, benchmark point one uh, is shown on the left. What is shown are the oscillation probabilities for both neutrinos and anti neutrinos. Uh, the solid curve is uh, um, um, the, uh, the oscillation probability uh, in the presence of new physics, whereas uh, the dashed one is with, the with all the parameters the same, just with the Yukawa uh, that is sent to zero in order to uh, remove the RG effects. So you can see that for this benchmark point one, uh, which uh, best fits T2K and NOAA data, we found very small differences between uh, the standard model and the BSM case as expected. But for instance, the situation is completely different on the right panel for this benchmark point two, uh, where the uh, oscillation probabilities are much larger than the standard ones also given here in dashed. Uh, that essentially means that uh, benchmark point two is already strongly disfavored by both short and long baseline experiments. And it is one of those that got discarded after applying the short baseline constraints. Uh, on the next slide, I will show uh, where uh, this large effect uh, is coming from. But before that, I just want to draw your attention to the lower panels, uh, lower parts of the plot uh, in both panels. And you can see that the difference between the BSM and standard model grows as the energy grows. And this is just coming from the fact that as energy goes larger, the momentum transfer at the detection uh, goes uh, also larger and the RG effect uh, is more significant. Um, here in this slide, I would just like to point out that uh, the uh, the reason why for the benchmark point two um, the oscillation probabilities uh, got so much different than the standard ones is because of the strong running of the theta one two parameter. Um, indeed, the we found stronger strongest effect uh, in in that parameter in uh, essentially all of the uh, uh, parameter points in the scan, and that's already known from the literature that the effect should be larger in theta one two than in the other two mix angle. Uh, roughly by the ratio of the atmospheric to solar mass square differences. For benchmark, ben benchmark point two, we also found uh, a rather uh, order 10% to 15% corrections uh, running in the uh, phase uh, phases, whereas as expected for the benchmark point one, uh, we found that most uh, few percent uh, corrections uh, when one goes uh, from a lower scale of production to the one corresponding to, uh, to the de detection. Um, just before concluding, I want to discuss one complementary picture, and that's the consideration of ultra high energy neutrinos. In particular, I'm interested here in the flavor ratios, the flavor composition. Uh, here we postulate that the, the scale of production is above the detection scale in accelerator based experiments. 
and that can uh, that is essentially equivalent to the uh, to setting the masses of right handed neutrinos and light scalar um, um, to the um, a momentum transfer corresponding to, corresponding to NUTEV and NOMAD. Uh, the scale uh, or momentum transfer detection is fixed to 1000 GeV squared, and that corresponds to the momentum transfer that would be induced by a scattering of uh, a PEV uh, neutrino. In the triangle plot, we're, we're showing the uh, flavor composition for several different uh, production uh, uh, um, com compositions at the production. So uh, here uh, is the uh, pion, pion decay, here's the neutron decay, here's the um, a, a damp muon case, and here's the case where only tau neutrinos uh, are produced at, uh, at the sources. Um, you can see that in all cases, the standard region accessible in the triangle is much smaller than the one um, corresponding to the case where we put in a new physics effect and the effect, uh, uh, the effect is actually most uh, relevant here in the upper right panel because the neutron decay production mechanism is already considered to uh, be disfavored. It's disfavored by ice cube at more than 68% uh, confidence level, uh, but we nevertheless found uh, plenty of uh, points, uh, blue points here inside of that region, which means that uh, in the presence of uh, new physics that uh, I'm discussing here, uh, those, um, uh, that kind of uh, production mechanism is back in the game. Uh, let me conclude. Uh, so here we considered the, the effects of scale-dependent lepton mixing parameters at neutrino oscillation experiments. Uh, the crucial thing is that there's a mismatch between the PMNS matrix at the production and detection momentum transfer. And this leads to a plenty of effects and a lot of new phenomenology. For instance, there's the difference between mixing angle measurements at various experiments that can get induced. There's zero baseline flavor transition, new sources of CP violation, and also the apparent but not actual violation of CPT. Uh, what is very interesting is that all of this can be induced by light new physics sector that doesn't even need to get produced. All the effects are coming are at the quantum level. And uh, in that way, the new, new physics is just uh, changing the influencing the change of the uh, elements of the PMNS matrix across the relevant uh, energy scales. I showed the results for T2K and NOVA and also in the previous slide uh, I briefly illustrated uh, the effect uh, of such new physics uh, in the flavor composition of uh, ultra high energy neutrinos. Uh, thank you very much.